Hello everyone and welcome back to The Forge. Now today we're going to be starting work on a, a new buoy project and we're going to be starting out with this right here. If you follow me on Instagram at mmforge, this is the piece of Damascus we've been working on over the past couple of days. It is a 60 layer clad uh, piece of 1084 uh, in the core so we should have a nice Damascus pattern either side with a nice black edge whenever we etch it. But I'm going to go for this smaller style buoy here. So let's get the forge lit up and get the press fired up and get to working on this back section. Now that I've got that marked, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to focus on drawing down the, the hidden tang portion out of this section right here. Of course, it's going to curve down like this, but that's fine. We've got plenty of width here. When we grind it to shape, we'll be able to clean all that up. So let's get this tossed in and get ready to start smashing that out. waiting for our steel to get up to temperature. I got a pretty cool package in yesterday. It's here in this box. What it is, is a replacement for the respirator that I've been wearing for the past couple of years, which is a full face, basically a gas mask is what it is. What I like about these is the fact that not only does it have the respirator part of it, but it also has the face shield. So basically you're getting, you know, extra protection while you're grinding. The half face ones are fine and you still got to wear safety glasses or whatever with it and they can fog up stuff like that these work really well uh, when i bought this one a couple years ago it was 65 dollars and uh, the one thing that i didn't like about it is it has these rubber uh, pieces here you, you cinch the helmet down with or cinch, cinch the, the mask down with and after wear and tear of course it broke and uh, now you only have the four points of connection versus all five so it kind of makes it lopsided it still seals but it's not that great so uh got on amazon and uh for i believe this one was 45 dollars that's with the extra filters i got this new one here and uh there it is full face protection Here's the uh, filter cartridges and of course the extra filters that came with it and the covers. So that's cool. Uh, but what I like about it is it actually has these nylon straps that I can cinch down. A lot harder to break than the plastic ones. And even if they was to break, I'm pretty sure I can just go ahead and fix that. Um, so yeah, it looks like it's going to be a lot more comfortable and a lot better mask to wear. So we'll see. We'll check it out and see how well it works out over the course of the next few months. All right, our steel should be at the temperature, so let's get back in there and get to work.
Got a little carried away on the forging, made a little bit bigger than I actually had planned, but that's okay, nothing wrong with that. But uh, got most of our profile forged in. I'll come in with a grinder and clean that up, get everything squared away. Uh, for now, I'm gonna let it cool down and then we'll get right back at it.
All right, that's a good stopping point for this video. Uh, we got everything ground to shape. Some points are still a little rough. Uh, we got a rough in our bevels. We'll do that on the next video. Our clip point, uh, we will cut our tang to length in the next video as well. Uh, pretty happy with the look of this. Turning out, turned out nice, I think. And so, said so far so good. I can't wait to get it heat treated. You can already see the uh, Damascus patterning sticking out where the rust is here on the blade from cooling it down while I'm grinding it. Hello everyone and welcome back to the forge. Now today we're going to be starting on part two of our Bowie knife project and uh, as you can tell it looks a lot different than it did when we first started. And the reason that we're starting the video out with it looking like this, yes it's already been heat treated, it's already been tempered, it's already been rough ground is because the camera card that had all of my footage of the heat treat and everything on it and the rough grinding actually went corrupt and so I lost all that footage. But that's okay. Uh, if you've watched my channel, you've seen me heat treat all kinds of different stuff. Uh, it did go well. You can already see that Damascus patterning beginning to pop out. So really happy with how that's turning out right there. And so we're gonna go ahead and pick up today moving forward with the rest of this knife. Now the first thing that I'm going to do today is I'm going to cut off this tang. This tang is way too long. I left it long to help aid in the heat treat to hold on to it back here. Uh, I'm thinking I'm going to cut it off about right here, which should give us plenty of material to work with uh, to go inside of the handle. And we'll also work on our spacer and our guard as well. We're going to get them. Uh, slot it out, uh, hot fit this guard up to the knife so it has a nice good a nice good fit and then move on to looking at the handle. Alright, now that I've got the tang cut off, the next place I'm going to turn my attention to is right here. I'm going to go ahead and bring these flats up to a pretty high grit uh, before we slot the guard because that way if I go ahead and slot the guard now and then grind and clean these up, chances are I'm going to have some gapping around that. I don't really want that. Uh, so let's go ahead and, and get over to the grinder and get these cleaned up. And then we can move on to getting that guard slotted out and hot fit. Now if you look at here at the way that I've got my platen set up, I've actually pulled it out and raised it up to where when I lay this knife on here, there is absolutely no way for these wheels to cut into it whatsoever as I work these sides. And the reason for that is because a lot of times if you leave it flat, you're going to make a mistake. You're going to be off a little bit. Uh, and all it takes is just a little bit of air to bump into this top wheel and cut a groove into your knife. And we really don't want that. So uh, let's get these cleaned up. All right, with those cleaned up for the most part, I'm gonna come in here and grind our taper into this tang, get it ready to get the guard slotted and hot fit on.
All right, I've got the guard fit up exactly where I want it to be. Now I'm going to get it tossed in the forge and we're going to hammer it the rest of the way on hot. All right, what I'm going to be using to hammer this guard on there is just a piece of black pipe, black steel pipe. And I've just hammered the end here, kind of ovalized the end. And so we'll, we'll drop the metal on there, we'll put this around, hit it on this end, and should be able to drive it right on there. All right, for my handle material, I have this piece of desert iron wood I got from knifekits.com. I've actually never worked with desert iron wood before, so we will see how it turns out. Looks like it should turn out pretty nice. All right, I'm gonna lay out the design of my guard. I got this little paper template here I'm gonna use. And this is just to roughly figure it out. Uh, I'll sketch this out, but as I grind it, if I wanna leave it wider or, or whatever in certain points, I can. Uh, but this will just give us a All right, so let's go to the bandsaw and start cutting that out and get ready to rough shape it.
All right, now I'm gonna go ahead and use this spring punch to punch where I want my alignment pins to go on the upper guard and, or on the guard and on this spacer. Now on the guard, we're just going to drill a little bit down into it, enough for the pins to, to seat into it well. But on this one, we're gonna drill all the way through. So not only will the pins from the guard line up with this, but this can also be pinned directly into the wood, holding all three pieces together. All right, I got everything drilled. I got our alignment pins. Now on these pins, these are 532nds brass round stock. It's a little bit big, but it's all that I've got. Uh, something like an eighth of an inch or maybe even smaller would be, would be probably best. But this will work out for what we're doing here. So I'm gonna go ahead and get these stuck in here. Put that one in. You may see where it kind of pulled out the side there, but it'll be all right. It will do the job. All right. Okay. I'm just gonna stick this on here. Make sure it's all together. All right. And there we go. Everything is nice and in line. Uh, I'll come back in here and we will start shaping the spacer here and then we'll move on to shaping the handle at which point we will start going back and cleaning everything up, get ready for our hand sanding on our blade, and be ready to wrap this sucker up. So let's move on to the next step. Everything's put together. Our pins are holding everything together nicely. It's time to move on to cleaning up all the individual parts and get ready to finish this up. So let's get after it. All right, yesterday we got our Bowie knife blade etched and it is soaking in the instant coffee. It's been in there since yesterday. Uh, we're gonna move on to our guard and spacer. I'm gonna give them a hot oil finish and then we will buff our handle. Uh, 
So let's go ahead and get this disassembled here. Let's get it taken in there to the forge, warmed up to, we're gonna try to get up to about 500 degrees with it before we dip it in the oil. And that should give us a really nice black finish on these parts. So kind of like uh, what I did with the Greek Copus build in one of the earlier videos here on the channel. So let's go ahead and get it tossed in there and get to moving on. Alright, now I'm going to buff the handle. 